here. Hi, welcome to Fiber Love Diary. I'm Trisha if we haven't met and if we have met, welcome back. How are you? Seriously, how are you? For real. Um, summer is drawing to a close here. It's okay. You know, you guys know that summer is my favorite, but I'm gonna try harder to be more positive about the other seasons this year. Wish me luck. <laughs> One thing that will be nice is I'll be able to wear wool. And I have had a project that I've been working on for, I'm not sure actually. There is some disagreement. I thought I started it um, January of 2021. But the people at the yarn store think I, ch I started it January of 2022. So I'm not exactly sure. The start was bumpy. I had to cast on, I don't remember how many times because I kept twisting the cast on and it was like, I wanna say 567 stitches, but that could be wrong. I'm not sure. So it is this poncho and it's not done. I'm gonna tell you why. It is this poncho by Rauma Designs and there is like no name for it it's just like hooded cape because it's supposed to be a cape we'll get to that too so this is it it is not blocked this is the body of the poncho okay this is the no sorry that's sideways this is the body of the poncho all right so this is the part that'll go around my neck obviously and it has a hood as you know since I said hooded cape is what the patterns called so the pattern had the cape um, open right here and it was steeped um, I do not see myself wearing a cape no shade to anybody who wears a cape like do you I think it's cool I just can see myself wearing a poncho a lot more especially since I knit that poncho I cannot remember the name of it, but I'll link the video. Ever since I tried that poncho on, I was like, maybe I am a poncho person. I never thought I was, what? I do think it's really cool, okay? It's gonna be, once it's blocked, it's gonna look even better. And then it has this really pretty snowflake pattern around the bottom. So the hood, I will have to steek. And then we started talking about it, my purse is right here. We started talking about it weeks ago in the lives on Sundays that I do with my Fiverr friends. The consensus was yes, do a steaking video. Please do a steaking video. This is the, um, this is the hood. Again, it's not blocked. I'll just block it after, uh, after it's all sewn together. So this is the front of the hood. So when a lot of times, it's not the same every time, but when you, do steek an object hang on okay here's my steaking area frequently it's a sweater or a lot of times it's a sweater that you knit in the round and it has color work on it and the reason why you steek it is because knitting color work is much easier in the round you don't have to purl you don't purling color work is not impossible but it is more challenging and it changes your rhythm and all those things what you will do when it's a sweater and what I had to do on this is when it's a sweater, a lot of times you'll knit your ribbing. I'm going to come in close. You'll knit your ribbing and then add a few stitches. See how the garter ridges are around those stitches? Then you add a few stitches to be your steek. I have done this before, but it has been, I'm going to say at least five years, maybe even a little bit longer. And if you're scared to do this, like who wants to knit this whole big hood or this whole big poncho or cape or however you're doing it and then cut it and find out like they don't really know how to do a steak and that was scary. Nobody wants to do that. So the way I originally learned, and this was quite a few years ago, it's when I used to listen to, you guys probably remember this, it's a podcast called Stitch It with Megan. And she did an audio podcast for quite a few years. She made a sweater for her son so she would steak it. And that's when I learned about this and how to do it. The way I learned then was I knit myself a swatch. I really think this is how you should do it. I mean, it doesn't have to be a swatch. It can be like, we were talking about it on the live. It could be like a cardigan for 
your coffee cup just a tiny little project or um, a cardigan for an egg you know how you make those you can make those little sweaters and hats and things for eggs in your egg cup that kind of cardigan because then you don't put a lot of time and effort into it so I knit us a swatch I knit us a plain white swatch I thought it might be hard to see on this really dark color I'm gonna get in close while we're doing the actual work here but there's a couple things I need to say first all right so number one and I say this all the time I don't know why I feel like I have to but there's way more than one way to do everything out there so this is not the only way to do it I'm choosing a way that you do not need a sewing machine because a lot of us don't feel as comfortable as we wish we did and some of us don't have one and we still want to do it right so do your thing if you want to do a different way there's tons of other videos out there second the way I'm doing is probably not the best way if you are using like a slippery yarn or a superwash yarn. This is better for a non-superwash yarn that's going to be a little bit grippy. It's not really the right word, but it's not as easy to frog. It's going to want to hold itself together a little bit more than a superwash yarn. So this is Knit from Knit Picks Palette, which is meant for color work. It is... I don't want to say designed for steaking, but it is steaking acceptable. Let's put it that way. Not saying you can't do it with superwash. You can, but I wouldn't use this method. I would use the sewing machine. I personally wouldn't do it at all, actually, if you're asking me. Would I? I wouldn't. But if I was going to, or if you were going to and you were asking my advice, I would tell you to use the sewn method. As always, it's your call. There's no rules. There's literally no rules. Okay, so what you will need if you're going to do this is a swatch. This took me a couple hours to knit up. I, I know that a lot of us don't like to knit a swatch, but if you want to do this with less fear on a project, I recommend investing a couple hours. Sorry. If you want to steak something, just invest a couple hours and make a swatch. It'll make you feel a million times better. I promise. Okay, so on the hood, and also actually in the um, the cape pattern, it had me cast on for the steak with just four dark stitches here, you can see right here. And it said to keep them all in this color unless it was a full white stripe, you can see right here, and then you go ahead and use the white. So um, in that case, it makes it harder to see exactly where your center is while you're doing the next step. So I, uh, I marked it. I took a needle and ran a contrasting color up the center. You do not have to do that. That's not something that is like required. So I'm going to start and this is me. I like to start at the what would be like the left side when I'm facing it. So I'm going to go into all right, making sure that this is in focus because I suck at that. What we're going to use is the one side of this green thread, like half the stitch and half the stitch right next to it for our steak. So I'm going to anchor my crochet thread in the bottom in between those two legs that I'm going to be crocheting. I'm just going to pull a loop through. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I just pulled the loop through. And then I'm going to pull my crochet strand through that, okay? That's to anchor it. Okay, so next what I wanna do is on the bottom stitch, I wanna grab the two legs right next to the green. So I can see them. I think you probably can see them better than I can actually. Okay. So you can see right where this green is coming out, I have the two legs right next to that. And I'm going to pull this through. I'm gonna do a slip stitch. You can do a single crochet if you prefer, but I do not, okay? And then you literally just go up each stitch and do the same thing. Okay, just gonna go all the way up the side. And 
Now I don't want to catch that green, but it wouldn't be the end of the world. But I really don't want to because I want to be able to just pull it out when I'm all done. I'm not actually this bad of a crocheter. It's just hard to do when you've got a camera between you and your work. Okay. I am being pretty careful not to split anything. And that's why you'll see me kind of wiggling as I go through. I want to make sure I have the whole yarns, but nothing else. Like no little piece of the green or... Or I really want to make sure, more importantly, that I don't accidentally go into the white on the other side of that green because the green is where I'm going to cut. That would not be good. Okay, so that is the last stitch. But again, I am going to go in the middle of that last stitch. It's kind of being squeezed together now and anchor on the other end. We're gonna do something to check it. Okay, that's right. Ooh, I had a moment, had a moment. Okay, so now we're gonna flip it around and do the exact, I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the other side and we'll be back. Okay, so this is exciting. If I did it right, meaning I didn't catch any of the green, I should be able to just pull it out. So we're gonna try, uh, yay. And then I wanna make sure that I can pull this apart and that I didn't accidentally cross over and pull part of like the other side, you know what I mean? That I didn't accidentally split some yarn with my crochet hook if that makes sense. This is like stressful, right? I feel like it's a little stressful. Okay, I'm gonna make sure these are tight. And then I have the sticking scissors. I got it from Knit Picks. It's very small and that is helpful if you're using doing stitches this small. Um, but you know those little metal ones that have like the cranes and stuff like that? Those are fine for this. I just want a small, scissors and a point is kind of nice too so <laughs> this is crazy we're gonna cut it are you ready make sure that you just like spread it apart and that you aren't gonna accidentally cut a wrong thing meaning some of your steak securing yarn because I like I said I like to use one that's closer to that color and then I'm actually gonna do three at a time here because I can see all three very well just cut them. <gasps> I cut them. Are you freaked out? We're gonna cut a couple more. Isn't that wild? Okay, I'm gonna turn this sideways just to make it a little easier to Again, you don't, you can see the purple, the back of the purple, you do not want to cut that. So just go slowly. To make sure you don't accidentally cut the wrong thing. I'm kind of stretching it and that's good because then you can actually see. Okay, I'm coming to the end. I want to make sure that I don't have one of those steak securing yarns crossing in the back. Ready? Okay, we did it. So now a lot of times what they'll have you do is pick up stitches along this edge and knit a button band. But look, like that's not going anywhere. And that's it. <laughs> Can you believe that's it? That's it, people. And like you can imagine, you can picture, if I had done this in the same white, it would almost disappear. 